The Alchemist's Last Blog I'm about to leave my earthly state for the Great Transfiguration, so I'm putting these events in my final blog as both an epitaph and an epiphany so that a few selected women can take sustenance from the revelation and follow in my footsteps. The planet needs us more than can be expressed. If at times this account has comic overtones, that is because Sister Tabitha of the Guild is an irreverent old soul. Did you ever wonder how just about everything you might think to search for on the internet is there waiting for you? It is incredible that subjects from the esoteric to the mundane are filed in readable content ready for your quizzical brain to muse over. It's a miracle. Those millions of acts of uploading information by geeks, imposters, scholars, everyday folk. And with AI it will soon be impossible not to have any query instantly answered no matter how unlikely. One is reminded of mathematical musings over infinity. An infinite number of monkeys on an infinite number of typewriters will eventually write the complete works of Shakespeare. These trillions to one odds could also be applied to an apparently accidental act of mine on the computer with consequences that drew me into the half-lit occult world I have been admittedly, always drawn to. Given that trillions of mistakes occur as millions of users hit the wrong computer keys when googling a subject, when I did it, I seemed chosen by fate to inadvertently unlock a code deviously hidden from prying eyes, a code to a dark web domain impossible for even the most advanced AI to uncover. I am Joan Clavier, a 40 years old woman of mixed race, Caribbean British, and a scholar of medieval manuscripts. I publish old tracts on my website. People can pay for my translated and updated downloads of ancient documents. Recently I became interested in treatises on everything from potions to poisons, alchemy, divination and the diabolical. I was at the time of this story thinking of creating an illustrated history of grimoire, books of spells to the uninitiated. I'm like a method actor. I got into the flow of this new research by a sudden importation of hazel twigs, pendulums, crystals, tarot cards and I Ching, not to mention books on astrology. My house suddenly became a museum of the arcane and the magical. Funnily enough, I bought it cheaply in the first place because it was known to be haunted by an old sorceress whose modus operandum was to carry a glass crucible of gaseous green liquid that spilled out like a fog, shrouding the old stairs as she descended them. Anyway, back to my tale. I was seconds into my search on the net for links to collections in museums and private hands of the aforesaid grimoire. A cluster of unexpected events converged in a matter of moments. My fingers were poised over the keys when my new, heavy, Celtic ring slid off a middle finger and rolled onto the keyboard. My black cat, watching from his perch on my shoulder, swiped at it, its claws scraping more keys. And to top it all, I inadvertently stiffened and held down the function and control keys by mistake. A never-ending string of characters, numbers and hieroglyphs ran along the search bar. The effect was immediate and eye-widening. The screen went dark and flickered, then it slowly coalesced into a colour I had rarely seen before. 
a tone of violet. It undulated like a loop of ocean waves. Then the colour faded and a moving image formed. I took a moment to discern what it was. I had seen drawings of such a place before. An alchemical laboratory full of tools. Alembics, crucibles, retorts, mortar and pestles. A furnace burned in an iron pillar with several doors. The room was lit by circles of candles. A throne-like seat faced the viewer as if specially placed there for a TV interview. Was it my hallucination? But was the smell of burning herbs and melting minerals exuding from the screen and filling my nostrils? Was the screen itself growing larger and becoming three-dimensional? Was my room merging with it so that the barrier between the alchemical workshop and my office had begun to dissolve? As I watched, a stooped, smiling black woman in a red gown entered and sat down arranging her clothing. She looked at me under a huge shock of grey hair. So... Here you are at last. I am Tabatha Winwood. Oh, I said hesitantly. I'm Joan Clavier. Here at last, I wondered. Mm, of course, she muttered, scratching her head. Early 21st century, judging by your clothes. I nodded, bemused. You are using a web link, yes? Faster, of course, than the time of smoking vessels and incantation spells. And encrypted both ends with a fiendishly complex address. Cyber sorcery, I'd call it. Cyber sorcery? I, I don't follow. I didn't. This was too surreal. Uh, sorry, sorry, um... Change setting, she nodded to herself and swept an arm. The medieval film set, for that was my impression now, dissolved and in its place was a shimmering crystal ball about four metres diameter, surrounded by deep red space. Tabitha Winwood was floating at its centre. Her gown was green. Oops, gone too far, she muttered and swept again. The sphere was replaced by a 21st century science laboratory though still containing recognisable relics of what I'd seen in her earlier alchemical theatre. Tabitha sat on a tubular steel chair in gold kaftan and faded jeans. Very clumsy, I apologise, she said, with a big tooth grin. Now we've got that sorted, welcome. Good to meet you. The room at her end and mine was still merged, so it felt as though I could reach out and touch her. Let me see, how did you get here? You found the code. No, no, it was by mistake. I recounted the circumstances of our connection. Really? You know what the odds are for an innocent to connect to this dimension? Astronomical. It wasn't a mistake. There's no such thing as a mistake. You are a true alchemist, albeit unknown to yourself. You were born so. As a matter of amusement, what were you trying to do when the mistake happened? I pulled my thoughts together. Uh, I was hunting down grimoire for my website. I, I, I thought I'd do something on occult texts. You see? The seed was in you. Then she snorted. As to grimoires, they're all rubbish. All but a couple of grimoires ever compiled with sensationalist fabricated fakes for a gullible male band of no-hopers would-be alchemists and their cultish followers. She changed her tone. Nice to welcome a new sister and give you foreknowledge of what is to come. 
Only one spirit in a thousand earth years crosses. No men, of course. Men can never be pure beings. Before you, there have been just the original four greats. Maria the Jewess, Madeira, Tafnutia, and Cleopatra the philosopher. And in the millennium and a half since then, just two. Genevieve of West Africa and Mai of China. Now you. Oh, yes, you. I was silent, thinking before asking. And where are they? Others now? Oh, they're there, doing their work. They've been watching over you, invisible but powerful. The mistaken assumption about alchemy is that it is an earthly pursuit, you know, turning lead into gold, eternal youth, knowledge and power in the world. It's not. That's just male materialism. It's actually about transformation into pure consciousness, freeing the earthly self from the constraints of time. Before any humans were evolved enough to take on the role, six winged creatures from Tetrius Magnus were sent as emissaries to Earth to be governesses to help evolve and nurture native alchemists. Occasionally they revealed themselves to the primitive minds of the time, thus helping to create a belief in all-powerful gods and angels. Generally, this is a temporary step in most species' evolution. It took thousands of years for their work to be completed, but in universal time it happened very quickly. In effect, the seven of us, you will be our eighth, were nurtured at Earth's guardian angels. Of course, there are guardians for all worlds with civilizations. We are a guild. Why me? I'm just an amateur historian. I've, I've done nothing. Ma magical? Alchemical? In my life? You obviously don't know yourself. Go and focus. Discover yourself. We'll continue helping you in the background. And you'll know it. She laughed. <laughs> I've said enough. I'm breaking connection now. Enjoy the mortal time left to you. We have all of eternity in front of us once you have transfigured. It was a sudden end. Just a smile and a blank screen and me alone again in my room. So there we have it. My final blog. My name is Joan Clavier, alchemist and guardian to be. Goodbye. was The Alchemist's last blog. I hope you enjoyed it. There are a number of other stories on the channel following similar themes. I hope you investigate them. In the meantime, please subscribe and, if possible, share the link with your friends. If you like reading and you fancy continuing to investigate my work, then please go to my website, www.jacksanger.com and there you'll find stories, plays, poems for free download, unless you wish to make a donation. So that's it for now. Bye-bye. Go in peace. <laughs>